Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to set up your station for megacode practice or testing, or for AHA um, megacode practice or testing. So here, you notice that uh, I have a couple of test trainers that I put together in order to simulate uh, a megacode station. Now, if you're using a SIMAN, you could employ the SIMAN. However, this is also... Uh, um, acceptable to perform your station. So what you're going to need, so first you're going to need your uh, monitor that's able to deliver all the electrical therapy. Here I'm utilizing uh, uh, CS1201. This is essentially a box that's able to generate my rhythms and also 12 EVKGs. And here uh, the MRX Phillips is where you're able to provide all your electrical therapies. Now, if my, my, my leads and my pads are connected to my box, what you want to have for the students is you want to take out pads that they can place on the mannequin, right, to simulate application of the monitor. So I would have the pads here. You could kind of put this into the side of your monitor so it's coming out from the monitor and the students are able to apply it in the correct locations. Uh, uh, important to emphasize this is goes below the clavicle, and this goes at the mid axillary line. And you definitely want to unzip the jacket when you're placing the pads. They don't go on the jacket. I often see students place this uh, on the belly like so, and it's important to correct them and uh, emphasize the correct anatomical placements uh, of all the uh, devices that you employ. Right. Uh, and the reason why I'm employing this little NEQCPR device is that it's able to give me feedback, audio-visual feedback, whenever uh, we are performing compressions. So here I have the QCPR app. I'll show you how it essentially linked. But uh, what's important uh, for you is that uh, January 1st, sorry, January 31st, 2019, AHA said uh, it's a requirement to employ feedback devices for all AHA courses. And the reason why is that this is the only way we can objectively uh, see uh, what's the depth, the rate of compressions, right, and the chest compression fraction. So if you look, right, uh, for the ACLS megacode uh, stations, we have chest compression rate, we have depth, and the chest compression fraction. There's no way you can see those things by visually just looking at the mannequin. You need to have a feedback device. Also, if you uh, look at the actual skills checklists, right, for your adult high-quality BLS. They say audio-visual feedback device is required for accuracy, right? Here we have the, the BLS checklist, CPR feedback device is required for accuracy. And this here, right, I have two BLS checklists. This is 30 to 2, so 30 compressions to two ventilations, and this is continuous compressions. Uh, you notice here, right, perform continuous compressions. You want to have students practice both, right, uh, uninterrupted compressions with asynchronous ventilations, one breath every six seconds, and the 30 to 2. And the reason why is that with the 2020 guidelines, right, if you look at the 2020 science summary, uh, AHA has said, right, you could employ a BVM device uh, if your local protocols allow you uh, to perform compressions and asynchronous ventilations with uninterrupted CPR. And this is why you want to practice this uh, for your stations. Right, and so this is the little NEQ CPR. Right, uh, it's the cheaper side. Right, three hundred dollars as opposed to uh, uh, resuscitating any, which is three thousand dollars. So this mannequin is able to give you feedback. However, if you look at the mouth, right, you notice right, I cannot place any types of adjuncts or anything at all here, or intubate the patient. That's why I need to employ the test trainer uh, for airway management, so the students can put. Uh, their OPA, NPA, and uh, ability to intubate the patient. So this is my airway test trainer. The next thing I want to show you is the setup of the uh, IV arms uh, so that you know how to do this. So the IV test trainer arm, uh, you need two bags, right? You need two bags. Uh, one is going to be uh, higher up. You only need to fill one with uh, um, uh, simulation uh, blood. Right, the, the red coloring. And what you want to do is as follows. Once you connect them to the arm, right, you're going to open the top bag and you're going to open your the bag that's lower. And once it fills up, you're going to then go ahead and close close your uh, the bottom 
or the lower hanging back. And the top one is going to remain open. And you'll say, well, what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is that uh, you want to simulate flash. You see how I have red in the uh, chamber here? So the flash chamber has red, and this tells the students that I have positive confirmation that I have flashback. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, here what's important. So whenever the students are starting their IVs, right? So they cleanse the side, they put a tourniquet, and once I am in the correct vessel, I want you to see, right, that you have clear feedback that you got flash. So they're going to hold the skin taut, cleanse the side. So as I'm inserting and I'm dropping down, right, you see how it filled up with blood. So I have positive confirmation. And then notice this, as I insert my catheter and I remove, right, this goes in the sharps. The, you see how it keeps coming out if you don't tamponade. Right? So what's the problem with this? The problem with this is that you notice in the back I placed a chalk that will collect all this blood that's coming out. If you do not place this chalk, your floor is going to be messy, right? So place the chalk so when those students are practicing and the blood is coming out like this, that's okay because this will absorb all the blood and you want to teach them to hold right the hub and then use another finger to occlude. Right, so that they're able to do this. Right, so it's very important. So let me take this out. So place a chalk underneath here, or something that will absorb uh, all the all this red fluid, and have a sharps container for the students to trash it. Right. Uh, so this is how it will look. Now let me show you how to connect it to the, your feedback device. So what I would usually do is uh, you could. Place one student to be the CPR coach. Once I do a few compressions, you hear the sound, right? And then what we gotta do is we gotta pair it. So the, the this mannequin is number 41, and we could disconnect number five. So I'm gonna wait until number 41 is paired. So it's paired, all right? And then you're gonna select at the bottom how many minutes you wanna run the scenario. Let's say you wanna run it four minutes. And we're gonna click start CPR. Right, so whenever compressions are being performed, you see my depth and rate, and then where ventilations are being performed, you're not going to be be able to see this on this setup. Why? Because we're not use, using the head. Uh, as I said, there's no OPA. Uh, you cannot intubate, so we're going to using the test trainer. So know that you, your ventilations are not going to come up with this type of setup, but at least you're going to get your depth and rate of compressions uh, when you're doing this. Right, so this is how I would set it up. I'll have actually the students doing this so they could see the screen. So I'll place it in their view, and I'll have another student to be the CPR coach. So what's their role? So their role is as follows: they are watching the screen, and they're giving feedback to the uh, students who are doing CPR. They'll say, "Push faster, push deeper, or slow it down," to get the depth and the rate and the correct um, um, benchmarks. And also, I would urge you to have them use uh, two uh, stopwatches in order to calculate the CCF. And what is CCF? So CCF, uh, if you look at the skill sheets, right, we have to calculate the CCF, and the app can give it to you. But I also like to employ right the two stopwatches. So the formula being uh, for chest compression fractions, time on chest divided by total code time times by 100. And here I have a sample problem. So imagine the students did compressions for two minutes and 47 seconds, and you ran your cardiac arrest, the total call time for four minutes. You multiply both by 60, so 60 seconds in a minute, which gives you 147 seconds, or 240 seconds here. 147 divided by 240 equals 61.2%. So if this was your CCF uh, chest compression fraction, they will be below the standard. So you want to emphasize to perform continuous compression asynchronously with ventilations, uh, utilizing the feedback device, and you could use two stopwatches, and I have a separate video I'll link that shows you how to do this. Now, uh, whenever you're doing the mega code uh, station, you, uh, you assume or we already assume that the students have practiced 
right? All the test trainers. So they know how to start IV access on the test trainer. They know how to intubate. They definitely know the operations of the monitor. So they know how to cardiovert, defibrillate, pace, perform a totally DKG, perform CPR. And they have been evaluated for all these stations and they were successful. So whenever you get into the realm of running your mega code or a simulation case, all the tasks have been performed and the students are successful on these before you could jump into this. So whenever they're performing the scenario, you'll have one team leader and the other students are being partners. Now, uh, if they are performing um, certain uh, tasks or not performing certain tasks and they are detrimental to the patient, what you want to do is you want to stop the scenario and provide corrective feedbacks. For example, let's say the students uh, initiated CPR, but they did not defibrillate at the moment they saw VFib. Uh, on the monitor. So you want to stop the scenario and, and uh, say, uh, you know, you see ventricular fibrillation uh, in order to um, achieve ROSC, you want to have early defibrillation. And this is why it's important. So I emphasize that and maybe rewind it for five seconds so they can uh, resume and perform the action. If you wait until the entire scenario is finished, they may be uh, 10, 15 things that they, that needs to be corrected. And if you uh, keep emphasizing those 15 things, they may not remember after you finish the scenario. So for this types of scenarios, essentially CLS and PALS, you want to stop, you want to state the corrective action and have them perform it and uh, continue the case. And uh, there is a study uh, that was posted specifically for this, and it was called Pediatric Resident Resuscitation, Skills Improve After Rapid Cycle Del Deliberate Practice Training. So they essentially uh, put their residents through PALS uh, training, and they did this uh, rapid cycle deliberate practice. And what they found is that uh, the more they ran these cases and the more the students were hands-on, and they provided real-time feedback, and if the tasks were not being performed, they told the students immediately, instead of waiting until the end to debrief them, they found a uh, much uh, greater improvement in the residents' performance uh, for PALS um, testing and um, essentially trans using it in their uh, real uh, situations on the hospital floor. So here you want to perform similar action, rapid cycle, deliberate practice, so the students are hands-on, they're not verbalizing the skills from the chair. Uh, and whenever you see a critical mistake, you want to stop the case and say, you know, uh, I, I, at this point, you guys should have uh, performed initiated CPR, or in this case, you, you should have performed uh, defibrillation, or in this case, you should have uh, established an advanced airway or wherever the step may be, uh, and have the students perform that particular skill, and then you want to uh, continue with the case. So this is how I would set up for my mega code uh, station.